Hi everyone. So a few of my followers have messaged me asking how I edit my photos and after typing out in details how I edit, I realized it's hard to follow instructions in the form of words when it comes to editing. So I decided to do a mini tutorial on how I personally edit my photos. I also want to quickly go over the process of getting the shots as well. I shoot with the Canon 6D and two lenses, uh, the 35 and the 85 Sigma, Sigma Art. The 85 is for those tight shots that has the creamy bokeh background and the 30 is more for the what I call environmental shots. I shoot mostly with very thin depth of field, anywhere from f1.4 to f2.0. Depth of field really depends on a lot of factors, but usually those are the apertures I usually shoot with. Now on the subject of lighting, after shooting a few different dogs, I realized different dogs do well in different lighting situations. Cal has black and white hair, so in my experience, he looks best in either shade or backlit. Not to say he can't be shot in hard sunlight, but I personally prefer him in those lighting situations. Now, some of the dogs, such as Mocha from Mocha the Taller, who is a Nova Scotia duck taller, does well in hard sunlight because the light actually brings out details in her eyes and hair. With that in mind, let's jump to the editing. So this is a shot of Cal at a waterfall that we visited the other day. Um, actually, before we go into the actual editing, I'd like to talk about the thought process that went into this shot. This was shot during a quite sunny day, but there were a lot of clouds as well. Uh, while waiting for the clouds to roll in and the cover of the sun, I had time to think about why I wanted to put Cal and ended up putting him along the wall right here where the water kind of trickles down. Um, this does two things. Uh, the, uh, the fall frames Cal and the wall to his right adds depth to the shot. The rest is just getting him to stay where I wanted and getting his attention. One thing to note, uh, I do shoot in RAW which flattens out the images quite a bit. Uh, as you can see, there's no contrast, there's no colors or anything, um, but it does have a lot of information that we can work with within the file. So after importing and selecting the files I wanna work with, I'll go to my preset tabs here. They're not really crazy presets that you see and can, you can buy on the market. They're just settings that I've saved up to help quicken up the process. The two main ones that I use and have made are the basic and the tone curve heavy. Um, the basic is just these settings here off the basic tab. The, you see here the highlights are pulled down all the way, which created this weird looking uh, white patches of his hair here. Uh, usually I need this much, but in this shot I don't. So I'll pull it up back a little bit and increase exposure. The exposure is mainly for the background that I see over here. Uh, I'm looking at the background and I'll pull up and down on the exposure tab uh, slider here. So I can see the background is, is where I want it to be. Um, the next step is usually with the brush. Um, so this is uh, the preset for the brush that I usually use on Cal. Um, pull out the highlight, a little bit of shadow, a little bit of exposure. Um, I'll tweak these to make it look natural, but most importantly is just the sharpness over here. This uh, kind of pops him out of the shot and also with the exposure as well. Um, usually the settings I'll use is all of uh, 100 feather, 100 flow, 100 density, and auto math is very, uh, a very useful feature. Uh, so turn it on and I'll show you what it does. Uh, so I'll press O, which turns on the mask overlay and uh, everything you select will become red. Um, so the auto mask function is basically it clips onto the edges over here and it helps you, um, it doesn't, so you don't have to choose edges by yourself um, you go. but sometimes it it just leaves really wonky selections like this uh, if, you, if it does that just turns off auto mask and just paints it yourself uh, you go. and the erase function also has auto mask as well so which means you can erase the outside edges that you accidentally clipped Alrighty, that looks good. Oh, I'll clip it in. Uh, and also, it also doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, most of the times, eyes can't really differentiate between minor details like these. So to turn off the mask, you press O. Uh, so this does, so this is the difference between after, before and after. This looks really wonky and not that good because of the highlight here. Uh, so I leave that up. Uh, pull that down up in shadow. And so I'll increase this up to a point where it looks natural. Uh, the highlights are still not as much as I want it. 
So I'll pull it down a little bit. The clarity is to help with um, the contrast at, that it creates when the highlights are pulled down and shadows are pulled up. And so it leaves a really grungy look. Um, the clarity, pulling down the clarity just helps soften up um, the shot just a little bit. Um, so the tone curve heavy is actually a preset for the tone curve. And this is how I use my tone curve. Uh, I'll tweak it sometimes when I don't like the shot, how it looks. Um, but this is basically how my tone curves looks like. So usually during the editing process, I'll press F to look at the whole picture to see how uh, it looks as a whole. Uh, right now, I see that Cal is not really the focus of the shot because the fall itself is, is so much brighter than Cal. Uh, the next thing I'll do is uh, lower the highlights of the fall itself. To do that, there are a few different ways, but the way I do it is with the graduated filter. And so I just choose one. Uh, this. It just shows up as uh, my brush preset, but as if you just double click on effect, it just goes back to normal, uh, the default. So I'll put the graduate filter over there and I'll pull down on the highlights. Uh, not too much though, so that it it's looks really wonky and maybe a little bit of exposure uh, decrease. Uh, press F again, see if it looks good. Yeah, Cal, Cal is now more of the focus of the shot. So the next thing I'll do is uh, color correcting. Usually I don't have to do this, but in this shot, I find that I really don't like the yellow color that ha it has here. Um, so for that, I'll go to HSL, which stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. I'll go to Saturation. I'm pretty sure this is yellow, but if uh, you just don't not sh are not sure which color it is, you can just click on this, drag it over to your photo, and drag up and down on the saturation. It'll go up and down, see? Yeah, it's so it's both yellow and orange. I uh, see that it went down too much. I'll go up a little bit. There you go. That looks pretty good. So I return the cursor to normal. Um, so I can see because I shot with such uh, wide open aperture, it'll create these uh, fringe in here. Uh, the bouquets are kind of purple-ish. I can see it over here too. And so for that, uh, I'll go to lens correction, manual, and it has a fringe uh, option here. So I'll go by one. See it went down a little bit. By two, there you go, it went completely. I can see this still a little bit over here, but that's not too much of a big problem. So overall, I still don't like the yellow colors here. So um, maybe I'll go there and decrease the temperature just ever so slightly. Oh, I went too much. Maybe I'll go or even 5100. There you go, that looks more like it. Um, also, I'll press F again to see how it looks like as a shot. I think it's just a tad bit too dark for my taste. Uh, so I'll crank it up a little bit. So like it just this brought out a little bit more yellow. Um, so what I do, I'll just go back here, repeat the same process until I like it. There you go. All right. So the editing is pretty much done. But the one last thing I want to do is focus the shot more on Cal. You can see here that this whole side is noticeably brighter than Cal because this light is coming from that side. Um, so what I do, I'll just grab a graduate filter, uh, drag it over, and reset the effects, and just decrease the exposure ever so slightly. This focuses the tension on Cal, which is the subject of the photo. And I'll press F again to see how it looks on a whole. And yeah, I pretty much, I like how it is. And yeah, this is pretty much how I edit my photos most of the times. So this is just a quick edited version of the shot, but I actually edited this before. And this will be how it looks like when I uh, upload it on my account. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, no, uh, other people do some split toning as well. Uh, I personally haven't found a color that I would like. This is just a typical Warm highlights, cool shadows, split toning, but I personally don't like it. Uh, so yeah. So here's the before and after. There you go. You can see, oh, I'll just put them side by side so you can actually see them. Press C for this function. Uh, it just puts the two photos together. That's how it looks before. That's how it looks after the editing. If you have any tools, techniques, tips, tutorials that we'd like to share, uh, please put in the comments. Otherwise, thank you for listening. I'll see you next time.